this dude had the biggest cock I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Literally like a fucking Shetland pony. He's like just going to town on this poor girl and like pointing at girls in the crowd. I'm like, oh my God, like just don't point at me. Like I'm fucking afraid. Yeah. Anyway, this lady come out and she was doing her little like strip show or whatever. And then she's like, okay, I need three boys to come on stage. I guess because I'm a big fucking idiot. Everyone pointed at me and then another friend and then this other like random guy. And they like line you up behind her. So it was this random guy, my friend, and then me at the back. So we're doing like the conga around like <laughs> on stage, just, I don't know why, but we're doing like conga line around the stage. And then I feel these big hands right here behind me. And I was like, holy shit, who the fuck is behind me? Like, this is a big human. I turn around, it's this dude in a gorilla suit with a massive <laughs> cock. <laughs> Huge cock, like a dude in a gorilla suit. I'm like, what, what, have, what have I done? Like, wow. why am I at the end? Like, what's gonna happen here? And then um, the lady goes, okay, like, I'm going to put this banana in me. If you don't want to eat the banana, you have to suck the gorilla off. <laughs> but I ate that banana so quick. I ate the whole thing. <laughs> this, this. We'll be right back with Harry Jazzy. <laughs> <laughs> Today's podcast is brought to you by Blue Chew. Use my promo code GOODTHINGS and get your first month of Blue Chew free and pay just $5 in shipping. Go to bluechew.com, promo code GOODTHINGS, and get your first month free. Today's episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month when you go to betterhelp.com slash allgoodthings. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash allgoodthings. Guys, we're here on uh, we're here at Happy Face Studios, right on Sunset Boulevard. Here with Harry Jowsey. I can't say enough about this guy. <laughs> on a, it's purely on a personal level, what you've done for me and how you've changed my life. <laughs> and I want this podcast. I want you guys to know that I'm like a cynic. Okay, I'm 49 years old. I live most of my days. I get up and I go, Oh my fucking god! I can't believe I have to do another day. Uh, but I do it because I have kids and I do love life, but you know, uh, but Harry is somebody, first of all, he has some, you have some billboards coming on Sunset Boulevard. That's what yeah. we're talking about. So look for Harry, White Fox. <laughs> but let me say that this gentleman right here, single-handedly has changed my life. That's great. So we went over to Harry's house. Yeah. Jess and I go over there. We're trying to get a YouTube video. We meet Harry because you came and did views and you're really funny. We meet Harry. He's great. So I go over there. I shoot a video with him. Because we, we, uh, Harry says he's been manifesting. So we do like a manifesting video. Harry, I want to show you. This oh, is, you have it. You have it. This is the, manife this is the manifestation oh, board. Wow. Now, now, Harry and I sat there. First of all, when you tell people that you're manifesting. They think you're crazy, huh? They think you don't like witchcraft. They think you're nuts. Yeah. So, so, and so when I tell people, I'm like, Harry Jowsey changed my life. They go, oh, that's awesome. And then I go, yeah, he had me manifest all this stuff. They go, okay, okay. But whether, whether you think manifesting works or not, it, it worked for me. And do you still do it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I think it's more of a, like, I, when I first did it, I was like, oh, this is horseshit. But the, you just write shit down and, and just, it worked. <laughs> like, and, and Harry's stuff is crazy. When we first started doing it, I would write like, he'd be like, well, what do you want? And I'm like, well, I want like, uh, you know, a new car. And he'd be like, he's like, no, not just a new car. <laughs> he's like, what kind of car? Like a Ferrari. And then I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, well, I'd like to go on tour. He's like, no, no, not go on tour. I'm doing an English accent. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what? He's like, go on. <laughs> he's like, no, become the biggest comedian of all time. <laughs> so here's what we wrote. And yeah. let's see, let's see what came Did true. Did you get eggs? You got eggs. <laughs> You probably, my fridge, I have three things of eggs in my fridge. You do? So you completed that. You did well. Um, the wow. other, The other thing that, okay, so what did that say? Eat um, at night. I want to get rid of my gonorrhea. Is that <laughs> in there? <laughs> you Completely forgot, cured. You got rid of that one? <laughs> yeah. uh, I love myself. I'm still working on that. Yeah. Eat at night. I have stopped eating at night. Really? Yes. I you mean, have? sometimes yeah. I've, I fall. But I've been really good at not eating at night. So no that's fucking done. Way. It's gone. Wow. It's gone. That's crazy. Unbelievable. Okay. I have, what does that say? I have my own TV show on Netflix. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking. I am a touring stand up comedian. Nope. Do you have the eggs? Wait, doesn't it say I have abs somewhere? I, right there. I'm a positive person. I have abs. 
Yes. Are we going to do a cock reveal? Oh. <laughs> Wow, it's so crazy. Isn't That's, that nuts? It was really nuts when I Can saw it. Can we get it first? It's fucking crazy. Oh, sort of, I'm a little fat today. No, but. they're there. Um, and then the, the, the craziest thing that you did was we went and we manifested it. And I wrote down, like, he's like, well, I, I said, uh, what, who would you like to meet? I said, Dave Chappelle, right? And then four days later, I went to the Sonic the Hedgehog premiere. And yeah. me and Jonah and Susie are like sitting on the red carpet because they let us go on there sometimes and like film vlogs and stuff. Yeah. But we're not like the main event at all. Like no one takes pictures of us or whatever. And we're sitting there and freaking a limousine pulls up and um, Jim Carrey gets out of the limousine. I'm not kidding. He locks eyes with me. He locks eyes with me the entire way. He comes over, he walks right up to me and he shakes my hand and he goes, hi, I'm Jim. Fuck. And so for me, I was like, that's nuts. That was four days ago that I was, and I know it's not Dave Chappelle, but still similar crazy. talent level. Like yeah, those yeah. are like the two biggest, it's two of the biggest crazy. comedians. And you know I'm all about comedy or whatever. Yeah. Um, have you had an experience like this with anyone else? No. I, well, the thing is, because you, cause you tell people and they're like, all right, like sweet. But I guess because you come over and I like forced you to do it. I'm like, no, you have to write this shit down. But it's really fucking... Yeah, it's it's really nuts. Like I, I don't think I've ever had like it to tell someone and it's actually like happened. But also like you write it down and you put in the effort. So it, you know you you went out there. It's not like you sat at home like fuck please. You just you were out. You went to events. Like you went to the gym. You're running around. You got a jackhammer. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, just incredible. And so now on to you. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, let's let's learn about Harry Jowsey. This is a Google board right here. Oh whoa. These, this is, uh, these are the most searched questions for Harry Jowsey. Are you ready? Really? To, yeah, let's take a look. Do I pull them off? Yeah, pull them off. What does, <laughs> what does Harry Jowsey oh, do for a living? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, good question. <laughs> I fucking don't know. <laughs> what of do, course, what do you, that's the top one. <laughs> you, you're at a party, yeah. and you, know, you don't know anybody, and yeah. nobody knows you. And you, Oh, hey, Harry, what do you do for a living? Porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're talking about OnlyFans. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. I get. Well, I don't know. Like, what do I do for a living? I just exist. Yeah. <laughs> how, how much? How much do you make on OnlyFans these days? Um, things have slowed down because we're in a recession. Yes. So only a couple hundred k a month. Okay. Oh. <laughs> 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 Jess and Ferris just went like this. They, they, they made the exact same expression. They went. <laughs> yeah. Nah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I have some friends that, I have a friend that wants to do OnlyFans. And yeah. he's like, he, um, he just figured out the other day that um, it's mostly dudes that are into him. Yeah. It's, but the thing is, it makes you like, I, I had a feeling I'm like, um, maybe I'm actually hot because like guys are into me now. Like, yeah. you know? Yeah, so I, You're I think hot, it's Harry. the best compliment. Yeah, I really. I think what Todd and Scott. I think Todd, yes, Todd we, come up to me when we were boxing. He's like, bro, bro, I created an OnlyFans, <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, like, like, what's your strategy? He's like, oh, me and Scott are just posting like shirtless photos, and we're not gonna tell anyone. I'm like, how the fuck are people gonna know that you have it then? Like, it was the most. Like, I was like, can you just like? He's like, yeah, we're not doing too well. I'm like, yeah, because no one fucking knows. <laughs> <laughs> we were we were laughing the other day. It's like a conversation between Scott and Todd, where Todd calls Scott. And he's like, "Hey, Scott, uh, can you check your DMs? Is it mostly dudes?" <laughs> um, so, all right, yeah. well, cool. I mean, I I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um, we're trying and, to, we're trying to transition from that though. I mean, I think I think it's incredible. Like it it gives you a good solid income to go yeah. do whatever you want. You know, and um, and you won't be able to make that money forever. One day you'll be exactly. sixty years old, and no one will care. We'll just, it's oh. true. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Okay. Keep peeling it off. Let's see what else uh, you got here. What is Harry Jowsey? What is Harry Jowsey podcast? Tap in. Yes, which is retired for a little bit. A little sucks. bit. Yeah. You miss doing it so much. I have a like my Spotify live show is so much fun because it's very like interactive. But where do you do that from? Spotify. No, no, on my phone. Like, on your phone. Wherever, like in my living room. Usually I'm not wearing like pants and I'm just like on the couch just fucking around. It's just audio. Yeah, yeah. So Great. it's so much fun. But Great. the podcast, I just miss it because you get to sit down and like just hang out with people and like yeah. talk to people. You're really good at it. When I did it, I was like, wow, Harry's really oh, good. I was you. impressed. I was like, damn, he's a good interviewer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks. Bro. You did really good. Okay, go. What is Harry Jazzy? 
famous for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, like, the funny shit, I'm, when people are, like... Aren't you famous for, like... Well, you're famous for Too Hot to Handle. I'm not even famous. I just, no, that's like, pretty... That's, if, that's what people know you from. I mean, I just Most people. More friends, I think. Yeah. I, just, I feel like I just have more friends than, like, a normal person. Because I hate the word famous. Like, I'm not like Drake, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not going to shut down a mall... Like, if people just walk past me and just want to fight me. In Australia, you would. No. No? No. We, we went back and I had, like, guys were so angry at me that I just existed. <laughs> Bro, we went to this Sydney Opera House. Imagine this. Sydney Opera House. Fucking, we just come back from the zoo. I'm holding my sister's baby, newborn, Georgia, um, my sister and her husband. And um, we walked past, like, these bunch of, like, drunk idiots. And the girls were fine. They asked, like, a photo. And everything was all good. And this one guy is just like at the back corner, just like yelling at me. I'm like, I got no idea what the fuck this guy's saying. He's like shit faced. And then he like gets closer and he's like, oh, how big's your dick? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm oh, clearly not as big as yours, bro. Like, this is, I was like, this is, like, and then he gets like really close. He's like, how big's your dick? I was like, well, like what? Like, what? What? Like, what are you trying to gain out of this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, I just, I just laughed at him. I was like, okay, like, uh, do you want a photo? Like, why are you so intimidated? Like, what, what's going on? Yeah. Nothing happened. And then as I was holding the baby, like, walking away, he goes, oh, like, like fuck off, pussy, like, all this shit. And I was like, bro, really? <laughs> like, what are you, like, what are you, what's the goal? You're big. You're 6'4", right? 6'5"? Six, 6'5". Five? Six, five, you're 6'5". Yeah. Being 6'5", that's, that's a dangerous position to be in yeah. as a man. Yeah. Because... A lot of guys say, oh, I'm going to take down the biggest guy. Yeah. And you're often the biggest guy. It's pretty easy to take me down as well. <laughs> <laughs> just aim for the ankles and go down. But no, it's really fucking, it was bizarre because I think that, um, especially, I don't know, I heard like if you go back to your hometown, this happened when the first, when I went on the first like reality show, I went back and this guy tried to fight me in a cafe. He's like, oh, we're all working as hard as we can out here, like trying to do this shit. I'm like, bro, like I'm making no money from reality TV shows. Like you don't get paid a cent, like. Yeah. Don't get angry at me. I'm angry at myself. Like I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a any skill set. I don't have a trade. I don't have a career. I'm just like on a show, and I got lucky. Yeah. Dudes just get pissed off in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never been to Australia. I'm It'd be fine for you guys, but I think it's because I'm Australian. They just right. they just want to kill me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. All right, go. Um, who was Harry Jowsey in Dubai with? <laughs> No way. That's, that's I, I don't get the joke. Who were you in that's, Dubai with? That's that's number five on the list. Wow. Who were you in Dubai with? Um Sveta. She's um the uh the coconut oil girl. Ah yeah. Wait, is that is it the the sex tape that you sold? No, that's a different one. <laughs> and her boyfriend doesn't like me as ah, well. Ah, yeah, see, he tried to email like my agency and he was like Take the video down. <laughs> like, all this shit. I'm like, bro, it's all good. Relax. Okay, so this is a sex tape you made in Dubai. Oh, no, this, this is a different sex tape that didn't get released. Got it. But Coconut Oil Girl, she, made a, she had a sex tape with Jay Alvarez. Ah, uh, okay, that's what I thought. Jay yeah, Alvarez, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, go ahead. Um, who is Harry Jazzy dating? Uh-oh. Good question. <laughs> yes. A bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> Moving past Harry, blowing yeah, by really that question. Really quick. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> fuck. Um, I got it. You got it? How tall is Harry Jazzy? I think these are fun. <laughs> I, I, I'm i pretty sure I'm 6'6". Six, six. My, my chiropractor said I'm 6'6", six, six, yeah. but I try and get as many inches as I can. How old I'm are you now? 25. Okay, so you stop growing now. I can hope not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I no, wanna, no, you're, you're good. That's a good height. You think? I think so. <laughs> Past 6'6 six, six is, you know, Yeah, I just want to, I want to, the thing is because... Airplanes. People, yeah, it's horrible, horrible, but people don't know... Like, they don't know why people know me, so I kind of want to look like I'm an athlete or, like, in the NBA or NFL. So I want to be, like, a little bit taller so that people are like, oh, maybe he's, like, good at sports, but I'm so uncoordinated. Like, I'll fucking fall over if I play basketball. You're not good at sports at all. Horrible. Really? The, like, the most widest, worst person on the planet. Today's podcast episode is brought to you by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Yes, as you know, life doesn't come with a user manual. Maybe you're dealing with a career change. Maybe you're dealing with a new relationship. I started this podcast this year and I was in therapy uh, a bunch and I really was struggling with some confidence issues. You know, I didn't think I could do this podcast on my own. The therapist that I spoke to 
really uh, talked me through it and taught me that, you know what, I have a lot to offer and that's what BetterHelp can do for you. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has helped over 3 million people match with professionally licensed and vetted therapists 100% online, plus it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can switch to a new therapist at any time. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless search for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash all good things. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash all good things. Okay, go ahead. Here we go. Okay. How old is Harry Jazzy? Someone called me fucking 40 today. <laughs> I got a, there's a TikTok. This guy was roasting the fuck out of me and he was just, he's like, bro, like, calling me 40 i was like damn bro i just turned 25 like this sucks why would he call you 40 i guess because i i'm aging terribly <laughs> i gotta get botox <laughs> i gotta fucking go crazy you drink a lot no not at all never since coachella really yeah i had um, what happened at coachella <laughs> oh fuck man yeah that was so embarrassing I don't was it like three days of drinking yeah and yeah. like crazy amount of drugs <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. i was like you know what? I need to hang up the boots for a while. Oh, good for you. I made a, I made a pact with myself that I'm not going to drink till my birthday next year. When's your birthday? May 24th. Oh, yeah. I'm the 23rd. No way. I'm having a 50th birthday party next year. Let's go crazy. Let's go. Yeah. You'll I'm, be there. I'm, I'm 26 turning 50, so. Perfect. Perfect. How was Harry Jowsey made in a test tube? Great question. I thought that would have been higher up on the list. Um, do you know that? Did I tell you this story? I, I, I looked it up last night. I, I, <laughs> you were confused. I was just like researching you. Oh. I didn't know that. That's nuts. You were made in a test tube? Yeah. Is, is, are, are your brothers and sisters this big? Uh, my brother, is, I think he's like 6'2". My okay. mom's six foot. So like, the test tube doesn't have to do with your size. I do, uh, yeah, I don't think so. I might, it was probably a really long test tube. But no, my, my dad ended up having like six vasectomies. So like he had four daughters. With a, he's a serial husband. He had four daughters and he's like, you know what? Let's wrap this up, give it the snip. I don't want any more kids. Yeah. That was a handful. And then he met my mom and he's like, fuck, I need to squirt in her. <laughs> and um, then ended up getting, getting, going to the surgery to get uh, it reversed. But he ended up, they fucked it up. So they ended up going back, like having six surgeries on his nuts. Oh, no. They had enough magic mustard for my brother. So they like, he jizzed in a cup. It was all good. Put it circled around with some eggs and put it back in the oven everything was sweet with him but for me there was just not enough good sperm yeah so i think it was a world first it, it was a bunch of like um headlines and shit when we were kids i don't really remember it but i remember it being around the house it was i think it's called like spermatic aspiration where they just said look we don't know we can't get any more fucking sauce out of you let's just take a syringe and put it in your balls and see what we can pull out that's what they did they had him like strapped down on a table got a syringe he was like awake for it, ripped out as much as they could, squeeze it into a jar, and then there was like a few, a fair few dead ones. And then my sister Rosie was like, "That one that's gone fucking nuts. Let's get that one to put it in the egg." And then I was just, I popped out. So they could see the sperm. Yeah, it was going microscope. nuts, and they're like, they, "Let's put that one in." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that one looks a bit special. Let's let's throw it in there. Your sister Rosie was in the surgery. <laughs> yeah, she, no, no, she was. Yeah, she was on the fucking. It's kind of wild that they. It's really nuts. So, how many kids does your dad have? Six. Would you have? Would of. you have six kids? Not a fucking chance. No. I can't even raise my dog. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. let it, I, I don't know how you do it. Like, I don't know how I do it either. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. It's fucking nuts. My my parents sent me to boarding school, and my mom would come to like the parent teacher interviews, and she's like. I'm paying you to raise my kids, and he still turned out to be a cunt. What am, I, what am I doing wrong? So they sent me to another boarding school in a different country. It didn't work out either. Yeah. Okay, here, let's finish right. these up. Where is Harry Jazzy from? Australia. Yeah. Does Harry Jazzy, where does Harry Jazzy live? Los Angeles. What season was Harry Jazzy on, on the island? <laughs> Dude, that's the most annoying shit when you're out. And everyone's like, oh my God, it's the guy from Love Island. I was like, fuck off, bro. <laughs> like, I was not on Love Island. I was on fucking Too Out to Handle. Oh, I was going to say, yeah, you're on Too Out to Handle, not Love Island. Everyone always says, like, oh, Love Island. Like, when me and Georgia went in Australia, like, oh my God, it's a couple from Love Island. I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Too Hot to Handle and Love It doesn't even sound the same. It's crazy. Anyway. When you were on Too Hot to Handle, you once told me that it is the, 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 uh, the, 
the show, Too Hot to Handle, in case you don't know, is you can't hook up. Yeah. That's the challenge, right? You've yeah. got to be there for three months. What is it? Six weeks? No, no, no. It's four weeks. <laughs> four weeks <laughs> yeah. without hooking up. And you said you had trouble not hooking up. Yeah, within like day two, I was fucking like <laughs> having crazy wet dreams. I was, I was walking around half stiff all the time. I was looking at the fish. Even though there's money on the line, you're too horny to win the game. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. No, That's wild. I was being such a little shit as well. I like. I feel like if you don't have that release, like you kind of lose your mind a little bit, especially when everyone's like sexy, having a few drinks and whatnot. Like I was so fucking fired up the whole time that I would have anyone looked me in the eyes, I would have come. So. <laughs> and how much money was on the line? Hundred thousand dollars. Wow. But it was it was for our season. It was for everyone. Um, so I was just like, you know what? You guys are being mean to me. I'm gonna go spend all the money. I think we spent like thirty two k. Wait, what happened? So everyone was just being dickheads. Right. And so me and the girl on the show just decided to spend as much money as we could. Because you won and you took, you took the money. Well, was, there was 10 winners, so it was kind of stupid anyway. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. I yeah. See. So the, but the thing is, we didn't know it was going to be for one person or for 10 people or whoever. So I kind of put it in my head. I was like, I'm not going to win. Right. So I'm just going to fuck it up for the person that does win. Right, right. So I'm just going to do whatever I want. Have you been offered to do The Bachelor? No. You no. haven't? I think they're afraid of me. Really? Yeah. Are, nah. <laughs> do you think you're too... Because um, the one thing I do love about you yeah. is you, you really have no walls up about sex yeah. or drugs. You'll just say... And I don't know if everybody's like that in your country. Are more people like that? Are we more uptight here in the United States? I think you, everyone's a little bit more uptight, but I think that I just kind of just, I'm like, I don't know. You meet influences and they're like, they're different how they are on screen than like, yeah. I mean, in real life and then on, on social media. And I think I met a few of them. I was like, fuck, man, you're a sausage. Like, I just want to be myself all the time. And it's like, awesome. If people want to judge me, then sweet. I'm going to get judged anyway because I'm a dickhead on reality TV shows. Yeah. It's, uh, it, I, I really, I really like that about you. And, and so, have you had any acting offers or anything like that? Have you gone on, did you go out on auditions or anything? Yes, I've been doing a bunch of auditions. Um, What's that like? Really fucking, like, scary. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it's, it's such a vastly different thing to what I'm used to. Like, I'm used to just being myself and just being just a clown on camera. But, like, to read a script and then to, like, think about, so, like, a, this character and then, like, going to that. It's, like, seriously vulnerable. But I realized that where you be vulnerable you, you like you'll find growth and i think that's what i found with myself because it's made me like look within myself and like really reflect a lot and then reflect about like these characters and then just also be vulnerable knowing that there's going to be like a team of people watching you like try and be someone else i don't know it was really like I, it really was a, it was a big like identity check for myself like just starting acting and like getting like and and being okay to be like embarrassed uh-huh but yeah that, this the acting stuff's been really good um doing a little f filming a few things here and there um which has been exciting so hopefully i get good at it and then i can figure it out mm -hmm. are you doing like youtube videos and tiktoks and stuff like that too um tiktoks i wanted to do i wanted to start doing youtube videos but i wanted to do it in a way like for like give backs and like to do things that uh-huh feel good like Steve will do it kind of yeah like David yeah but did, not on that like. fuck it <laughs> yeah well, I don't have that much money right but yeah, yeah. like shit like that because yeah, he had so much money he he gave, he gave away so much money I don't know how much money those nail boys are making a year but that's like I think they have a lot of revenue streams yeah I think they have the, the, the happy dad and I think they have the merch well I saw on their podcast recently they were saying they haven't taken any money out of Happy Dad because they're just constantly really? like reinvesting it. Really? But I, I, I think I heard from like down the line that they make like a million and a half a month on their like full send. Uh huh. And then supplements. Supplements, and then I think their merch drops are doing like eight to ten million dollars a drop. Yeah. But I'm not. I'm. I don't know. Hundred percent know the numbers. I, I, we met Steve. He came to David's house. He gave David a Tesla. Sweetest guy. Yeah. And and really funny. Yeah, like he was he was uh, he was really funny. I don't know some of the jokes that he said were so funny. I don't know if he put them in his video or not, but actually he probably did. Um, yeah, he, but he was making care. like Brian Laundry jokes and like we were like, oh my god, this guy. Yeah, is crazy. no, he doesn't care. You know, he doesn't care it's at all. Fucking it's wild. really funny. Um, okay, so you you sold a sex tape for a hundred thousand dollars. Is this true? No, 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 for a hundred thousand. You made a hundred thousand. I made a hundred thousand dollars in like the first twenty four hours. In the first 24 hours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And 
how long is this is the sex tape? Wait, you, wait, I think it's like two minutes. Is it? It's just two <laughs> minutes. Was it edited? Yeah, yeah. It was. It was a. It was a fifteen minute video. Like the 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 first fifteen minutes. No, the first, I think it was like 14 minutes. Oh, I thought I was, you said 58. I was like, you had sex for 58 no, no, minutes? No, no, no way. No, no, no. no. Yeah, the, the phone was just on the like ground, like filming the fucking roof. <laughs> no, yeah. I think like, yeah, the first like 14 minutes I was like talking and then the last minute I was getting, no. It was, it was like edited down. We were, we were just fucking around in the shower and having a good time. Damn. Yeah. Did you see Blueface's ex-girlfriend posted all his sex tapes on her story? No, no. What happened? <laughs> yeah, it happened like yesterday. She uh, saw him with another girl or something and <laughs> just posted videos of them fucking on her story. The rapper? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, she was like creaming Isn't all down illegal? his balls. I'd probably. <laughs> yeah, but like, they're, yeah, their relationship seems so toxic, it's hot. Um, okay, so, and then one of the things I also love is that I just, you've had a couple, you've slid into people's DMs. Oh, fuck. And that's been really, I think, interesting and entertaining. Yeah. Right? You sent Khloe Kardashian a bunch of flowers once. Uh, is that what happened? No, 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 not at all. No. Like what happened? So that situation was so fucking funny. Um, I was, I picked up a bunch of flowers because I'm not sure if you know, but like, I think it was like last year, me and Netflix, like they had me in their bio, the Netflix official page yeah. had me in their bio for like two weeks yeah just saying like this is like harry jazzy's like girlfriend account it was, it was it was something like really cute and um i went to pick up a bunch of flowers and like cookies and whatever else for their um social media team because i was like oh this is really nice that they're like playing this like online game with me because i was doing like tiktok videos and doing a bunch of stuff like towards them um and they were being like really sweet and like really flirty and it was just really nice so i picked up I had, a, I had a Bentley for a couple of days. I picked up these flowers and cookies and I posted it on my story. And then it was um, this tea page called Dumois. Yeah, Dumois, yeah. And they posted, um, someone <laughs> submitted, Harry Jazzy picked up a Bentley and a bunch of flowers to, uh, to go see uh, Courtney, no, Khloe Kardashian. Um, and it was like, they've been talking and, and things are like, it was, so it was completely made up completely made up and then people started getting mad at me like oh you must have submitted this and i was like bro i'm fucking driving like i don't know what the fuck's going on but it, it started my phone started going nuts like my mom texts me she's like i didn't know you were fucking a kardashian i was like mom <laughs> i wish even even yesterday my, my bellboy brought up um some packages he's like bro i was just listening like i last year you were like hooking up with chloe kardashian i was like fuck man like I hate to burst your bubble. Like, I wish that was true, but... Um, Isn't that amazing that it could take off like that? Yeah, yeah. It's truly... There's not, not based in fact in any way. Yeah. That people just love... Because someone just saw you with the flowers and then said, oh, he's taking them to Khloe Kardashian. They just made it up. Yeah, fully made it up. And the, the worst part was, not even in 24 hours, she commented on it and said, this is absolutely not true. I'm like, Chloe, <laughs> let me fucking live... Let me enjoy my moment in the sun. I think she's really sexy. I like her a lot. I think she's stunning. Yeah, Apparently, she's, she's really funny as well. Is she? Apparently. I I've never met her. So. I, I, lo I love all those girls. I think they're all really... I love the show. I sit down with my kids, and we, we, we watch it. It's like... It's one of the only shows. We watch that and Rick and Morty together. And we'll, we'll really? say that, too. We'll be like... If I watch an episode of the Kardashians without one of them, they'll be upset. They'll be like, what? Really? You're supposed to save I've them. never do you watched... Save, do you save uh, shows... No. No, you don't do that, right? No, because I fall asleep on everything. I'm the worst person when it comes to watching anything. Like, as soon as I'm, like, in bed, like, um, I had Georgia over, and there was, like, the GameStop um, thing on Netflix. Have you seen that? Where they're no. talking about, remember when GameStop was going nuts, like, last year? Oh, yeah, yeah. COVID? Oh, there's a, there's a doc on GameStop? Yeah, they're, like, talking about, like, the whole process. I want to watch that. I was so excited to tell Georgia about it. I'm sitting there, like, like t giving her the backstory, like running down, and then as soon as we put it on, as soon as the, like the Netflix logo hit, I was fucking snoring. She was so angry at me. She's like, "How are you gonna sleep? I just I can't watch anything. I think I have like a problem. Like, oh, why do you fall asleep so quickly? I think because I'm a big human and I take a lot of time to recharge. <laughs> I think that's what it is. Like even on planes, like I will fall asleep before the plane takes off. You know, my son is six three and he'll sleep for like fourteen hours. Yeah, I think that's it's really a, interesting. Yeah, I wonder if that's true. Well, he's how old is he? He's sixteen. Yeah, he's probably still got a lot of growing to do, so he's probably, he needs it. I know, I hope not. I hope he stops. 6'3 at 16 is fucking nuts. He doesn't nuts. fit. We, his, his bedroom is, a, is like a converted garage, and he doesn't fit in the room. Holy shit. I feel really bad for him, yeah. That's he, a he'll, big he'll, boy. he has to stand like this. He's like, good night. Really? <laughs> <laughs> 
tell me, tell, yeah. one of my favorite things is you just tell great stories. You just have wild stories. What is uh, your, tell us one of your best wild stories. I was, um, I said this accidentally on TikTok Live yesterday, so I'm okay. just going to say it here. Great. Um, there was, they were asking, uh, if I, someone was like, oh, have you ever been to Amsterdam? And yeah, when I, was I eight, just went. You went? Yeah. Did you like it? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. It's it's not, it, it's not my favorite place in Europe. No, but no. it's um. We went by Anne Frank's house, oh. and that was interesting. It's it's nice. There's a lot of bikes there. There's yeah. There's like too many bikes. No, it's and, a lot. And 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 when you're walking, you have to be really careful because you will get hit by a bike. It looks like a street, but it's actually a bike lane. Yeah. But go ahead, finish your story. Yeah, yeah. So I was 18, and um, I first went there. And um, I don't really smoke weed. I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of it. Yeah. But at 18, I was, I was doing everything I, I could get my hands on. And I remember I was so fucking high. There was this guy that I met from Australia that I accidentally sold some like drugs to yeah. when I was younger. And he's like, oh, let's hang out, whatever. He's like, oh, this is the strongest weed in Amsterdam. I was 18. I was like, fuck, I don't give a fuck. I had <laughs> half of a cone. And I remember like turning my head feeling like my head was turning and my vision was just like dum, dum, like that and i was on a this like tour with like a bunch of people and i remember being on the bus just like so fucking out of it like i was like dribbling on myself and like crying <laughs> it was so high i've never had anything like that happen but then that night we went out and we were drunk as fuck and we're in the red light district right yeah now i've never i've never paid for sex but I, all my all the guys are like going in and like going to do their thing and i'm like you know what maybe i'm gonna give it a shot and I walk up to this window because it's like a door and she, they like open it up and they like try and like pull you in. I was so out of it. I was trying to like tell this, this wonderful lady. I was like, look, I, I can change your life. You could be a school teacher. You could be this. You don't need to do this stuff. Fresh 18, <laughs> but I had the hair down to here. Skinniest little rat, like skinny fat. It was disgusting. I was like, oh, I'll change your life. I'll do all this stuff. She punches me in the fucking nose and I start bleeding. And I was like crying high out of like, like, why did you do that? She's like, get the fuck out of here. Like, smacked the shit out of me and then wow. her like they like pimp like pulled you away pulled me away it was the crazy then i got pickpocketed and then i got my drink spiked it was the craziest shit ever yeah. oh my god what did the pimp say oh he was just he was like get get the fuck out of here you can't be doing this stuff and i was like well, i'm just so sorry i just want to help like, yeah 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 yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah no she wants to be here I'm like, oh fuck my bad i'm just yeah but yeah then um yeah that also, yeah, because there's a lot of pickpocketing that happened. And, yeah, they uh, said that when I was there. Uh, yeah, everywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. Like, I was walking, and this guy's like, oh, my God, uh, I saw you at the club. And I was like, did you? And he, like, dabbed me up and, like, gave me a hug. And then I was walking away. I was like, where the fuck is my phone and my wallet? It was, like, that quick. And then I, like, ran after him, and I, like, grabbed him. And he's like, ha, ah, bro, I was only joking. I was just trying to see how, uh, like, see if, if, you were, if you were safe and you could, like, protect it. But I was so, so out of it that I was like, okay, thanks so much for, for testing me. <laughs> He's like, oh, good. I never saw the guy again. <laughs> I was like, oh, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, I needed that. Um, and then, yeah, I had my drink spiked. After that, we were at, um, it was like 4 a.m. at this bar. And these guys, it was like these three guys, they kept, like, trying to pour their drinks on the girls. Like, they had their beers. And, and I was like, yo, you can't do that. It's not okay. Like, I don't know where you're from, but you can't, like, yeah. pour your drinks on the girls. Like, they're yeah. uncomfortable. And like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry, brother. Here, have this beer. I was like, of course. And like, how fast can you drink it? I was like, really fucking fast. I'm Australian. <laughs> and then I drank it. The whole thing, don't remember a single thing. The, the girls that we were with, the next day they told me, they said that I was so adamant that these guys were my friends, like my best friends on the planet, that I was, they're like, we're going to go home. Like, how you have to come home? And I was like, nah, fuck you guys. Like, these are my boys. Like, apparently I was just, I wanted to stay with them. And I only had one video on my phone from that night. And it was these guys like carrying me. And I was like, these boys can speak like this other language. Um, and then I was like, ah, and then I painted them and, and the guy's like, yeah, let's take him. And then I was like, no, no, he's fine. Like, let's leave him. And then the only thing I remember snapping to is like holding my neck. I was like, holy shit, I'm going to get fucking killed. And I, and I was running. I was just running through the streets of Amsterdam, so fucking paranoid. And my memory kept like coming in and out of like what the fuck was going on. I had no idea what happened to me. I don't know what like spooked me to, for me to just start running and crying ran for some reason i made it back to the hostel that i was at and the girl said when i come back i was so terrified that i couldn't even pee they had to like this guy had to hold my dick while i was like looking behind me because i thought they were going to come get me she said i peed for like 20 minutes damn it's crazy yeah are all those days behind you now 
Yeah, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Till my birthday next year, then I'm fucking wind it back up again. Unless you see Todd this weekend. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. I had the most crazy voice note from him. Uh, but I can't say it, but it was pretty nuts from the, from the weekend. And, and he was like trying to get me to come out. I'm like, man, <laughs> I, was like, I, I was like, I love you guys, but like, I don't trust myself around you. <laughs> they were at Jester's Out with Todd till four in the morning. We, we started, they started at 12 o'clock. And they went on till four in the morning Saturday. I left at three p.m. Yeah, yeah good yeah, man. Yeah, yeah I, I was. I was like, look, I'm so tired. I was out the night before. Wait, can but. you? We can cut this out. But wait, can you tell us about the brothel in where'd you go in Thailand? Oh, in Amsterdam. No, no, with the levels. Oh yeah, I can talk about that. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> like I didn't want to make you uncomfortable if you didn't want to talk about it. No, 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 I don't give a shit, bro. Look at me. Like, <laughs> Fuck it up. my favorite podcast. Yeah, so... Uh, we were boxing the other day. <laughs> I go boxing with him on Saturdays, and, you know, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, when I was starting my sunglass company, um, we thought we were going to do, like, watches and shit as well. So, we went to Hong Kong, me and my best friend. Um, went to Hong Kong to, like, go to this, like, watch fair, and uh, one of his friends who, like, lives there... And by the way, Hong Kong is awesome. It's so beautiful. He's like, oh, you guys should go to Fuji Tower. I'm like, what the fuck is Fuji Tower? It's this fucking skyscraper, and every level is like girls, like like escorts. Or okay, a skyscraper, so 80 floors. Yeah, pretty pretty high. Just big, huge. Yeah, and it's like real dodgy part of town. And you go in, and no one get mad at me, but this is what he said to me. He said, <laughs> the lower the level, the worse. The, the lower no. the attractiveness. Sure, sure. The girls get more attractive as the you go up. The, okay. And it's more expensive as no you go up. Don't get mad at us. Yeah. Okay. But this building fucking stank. And, like, you go in and there's, like, a line of, like, sweaty dudes <laughs> that are just, like, like fucking, I don't know. like Is this legal? It's Yeah, it's fully legal. Wow. Yeah, these dudes, like, sweaty and, like, fucking frantic, like, running up and down these stairs. There's no elevator. There's nothing. So we went the first night and we went in and... Like, just because I was like, I just want to see what this place is like. Like, I'm just curious. Sure, sure, I'm yeah. curious. Yeah, yeah you want to see it. Um, I wanted to, when I went to Amsterdam, I wanted to see the red light district. So, David yeah, and I. Yeah, exactly. And Taylor, we walked over just to see it. And then, yeah, we left. But. Yeah, yeah. No, because you like, I don't know. It's just one of those things that, like, you would never, it would never happen no, here. No, you're not going to be able to see it again. You might not never be back there. Go. Yeah, yeah. So, we went in and, like, <laughs> it's just, like, all, and there's, like, doors on, like, every level. And, like, wooden doors. They have a little camera on top. And then you'd, like, knock. And they'll open the door. Um, and they, like, stand there. And then you either want to go in or not. And then you go in. And they, like, shower you. And then you do the deed for, like, f however long. And then you come right. back out. And then you leave. And, like, we went in. But I was so scared. I don't know why I was so afraid. Like yeah. me and my best friend were holding hands. Yeah. I was so afraid. We went all the way to the top level. There was, there was, the doors were all locked because I guess they were very busy. Went down, like lower and lower and lower, and then we left. Like we didn't, we didn't do anything, but we just wanted to see. But like the, just the whole aesthetic, everything was really bizarre. But the next night, we're like you know, we're gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna like properly try and like enjoy this. Again, fully fucking so afraid for some reason. We were so scared that we didn't want to be left alone. So by the time we finally found like a door that was like open and the lady come out was like, hey, um, can we do this together? Cause like, <laughs> I don't want him to like stay out here. Yeah. And the lady was just like, yeah, sure. And then I looked at my best friend and we're both like, nah, let's not do this. And then we like, we were like ran away, but it was, yeah, it was really nuts. I forgot another story at Amsterdam. I uh, ate a banana out of one of the strippers on stage. You know, they do the sex shows. Yeah, I, f I forgot that one. That was a good part of the story, but that was the same day. <laughs> yeah, it was it was awesome. Anyway, sorry, I'm like rambling. <laughs> it was crazy. They had um, what they what they do is they're like, cause they they have the sex shows where they put like their pen in them and they're like right on their chest and like shoot ping pong balls and whatever else. <laughs> did and they, then did you see any ping pong balls come out? Yeah, dude, it was fucking. Do nuts. they do they actually come out? They, they yeah. shoot out like yeah it's, it's insane but like because it's like little 15 minutes strong, like, strong abs yeah, yeah bro, i could yeah, fucking yeah. like pop a balloon with it yeah um but they have like little like intervals where like one moment it's like people fucking like yeah. this dude had the biggest cock i've ever seen in my entire life <laughs> literally like a fucking shetland pony he's like just going to town on this poor girl and like pointing at girls in the crowd i'm like oh my god like just don't point at me like i'm fucking afraid yeah um they do like the 50 minute thing they change and then anyway this lady come out and 
she was doing her little like strip show or whatever and then she's like okay i need three boys to come on stage um and then i guess because i'm a big fucking idiot everyone pointed at me and then another friend and then this other like random guy and they like line you up behind her so it was this random guy my friend and then me at the back so we're doing like the conga around like <laughs> on stage just I don't know why, but we're doing it like conga line around the stage. And then I feel these big hands right here behind me. And I was like, holy shit, who the fuck is behind me? Like, this is a big human. I turn around, it's this dude in a gorilla suit with a massive <laughs> cock. <laughs> Huge cock, like a dude in a gorilla suit. I'm like, what, what, have, what have I done? Like, wow. why am I at the end? Like, what's going to happen here? And then... Um, the lady goes, okay, like, I'm going to put this banana in me. If you don't want to eat the banana, you have to suck the grill off. <laughs> but I ate that banana so quick. I ate the whole thing. <laughs> anyway. This, yeah. We'll be right back with Harry Jazz. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Dude, you've really lived a life. I mean, you've done a lot. How, where did you get this uh, lust for life? I think my, my parents. Yeah, they just, like... Ever since I was young, like, my parents just didn't have any secrets. Like, yeah. my, my mom told me the time she went to, like, Africa and this guy with, like, the biggest cock on the planet, like, tried to, like, sleep with her and she, like, freaked out. Like, my dad has told me all about his, like, you know, any, like, drugs or, or any, like, crazy, like, party trips. I don't know. Did your, dad talk, did your dad told you about, like, sexual escapades and stuff like that, too? Or yeah. Not? See, I try to think about that with my son to sit there and tell him about sex. It's... I, I just couldn't do it. I don't know how. I think, and then in some ways, I think it's really healthy because mm -hmm. it allows you to um, to not have any sexual hang-ups or to yeah. like be like, uh, sex. I mean, like if I'm watching a TV show, mm. if I'm watching like a movie with my son and like boobs come on in the movie, yeah. I mean, like I'm like super uncomfortable. I, really? I, yeah. I don't know. I think my parents just like would just get like super drunk and just be like, you're going to sit down and listen. <laughs> I'm like, oh, fuck, here we go. That's awesome. But yeah, I don't know. I think it just, we had a very like, uh, just, a, I don't know, a good, my parents, we all had like a good relationship where there was just no secrets because my mom and my dad would always be like, would rather, like if you if you go out and get fucked up or, or some shit happened, like we'd rather know mm -hmm. and um, and just, just understand so we can like help you figure out kind of what's going on instead of you trying to be like secretive and, and sneaking behind our back. Like mm -hmm. if we, wanted to have a girl over or whatever it was just it was more of a yeah i don't know i think we just had like a very good like relationship it's really good not hey. in like a weird way or anything but just like they just it, it's better to be open and honest i think maybe that's why i'm so open and honest about everything as well that's awesome yeah and you talk to your parents every day no yeah. not at all <laughs> yeah yeah my dad fucking hates me and um, <laughs> wait what yeah no he hates my guts why does your dad hate you uh because he's a grumpy old man um, <laughs> How old is he now? Uh, I think he's like 67 or something. Okay. Maybe. That old, that old. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, there. Uh, I don't know. We just, we, we, we haven't had a, a very good relationship and it was just uh, a lot to do with like uh, alcoholism and, uh -huh. and a lot of those like things uh, like from our upbringing and stuff that kind of like caused a rift between us. And then as I was filming Taught the Handle, my parents were actually getting divorced while I was on the show. Oh, so gosh. it was like... It was a it was a weird one for me because um, obviously you want to be there for both your parents, but then again, it it was just it was tough because I was like, oh, I have to I have to film the show. You guys can figure it out. <laughs> yeah, and you don't have a phone. Yeah, so no, you no can't phone, really nothing. Yeah, so I had no idea what was going on. But um, me and my mom have a great relationship. Uh, me and my brother don't have a good relationship at all. Um, and then yeah, I think you told me some stuff about your brother. Yeah. Yeah, he's a bit of a sausage, but he's okay. I'm gonna I, start using that term. You, sh you should. Yeah, it's very like people are like don't know how to how to take it. Um, My friend Joe is a bit of a sausage. Your friend Joe is a sausage. Yeah, yeah Joe Volpus. Who's that? Have I met him? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I'm the worst of those. If you knew Joe, he's friends. With, he does a podcast with Ilya. Oh yeah, yeah I, I've yeah. definitely met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. a great guy. There's just so many people at that house all the time. And I'm like, fuck. I, There's so many people. Yeah, I just dab people up and I just call them like nicknames. Um, maybe that's a good YouTube series for you, going what? going to hang out with your dad. Oh no, nah. <laughs> <laughs> no way, bro. First time I see him in fucking years with a camera crew. Like, hey, dad, I'm here to figure this shit out. Because like the the worst thing that happened is when I did ayahuasca at the start of the year, I had like this crazy like. Uh, revelation that like 
because um, it took me back. Do you know what ayahuasca is? I want to hear about this because I want to do ayahuasca, it was, but I'm it, too scared. Nah, there's no, no need to be scared. It was, it was honestly... It was, Where'd you go to do it? Uh, Costa Rica. Okay. I applied through this company and it was like, they, everyone's like verified that good people and yep. like everyone has good intentions. But when I did, it was because the, the, we do it three times. Um, over like 10 days, there's a bunch of like character building exercises and a bunch of like really interesting stuff that you have to do, like dive deep. But the first night that I did it, the whole night, I was just sitting there just crying, like just in, in, a, in a ball, just crying because it took me back into like my body as a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, and I was just reliving like all these memories, like uh, with my brother, like running in the rain and like putting a trampoline under a tree and like jumping and like jumping up in the tree and like jumping out, like really like, random things I've never thought about and then it, it like snapped and I was um with my dad like gardening and then beekeeping and and then him teaching me how to chop a, chop a tree wow. down and I, and I was sitting there all like, of that there was, there was you went to all of those places just sitting on the floor yeah eyes closed just like and it just and I was just so overwhelmed with the feeling of like love and having my two best friends and my dad teach me all these like skills and having like my best friend and my brother like running around in like you know we had like cyclones and stuff and like being outside like on skim boards and like going fishing and like going I don't know there was just there was so many memories that just like hit me and it was th the reason why is because like I've oh, I've never really thought about that I've always thought about when I think about my dad and my brother like you know addiction and and, and aggression and um always having like a combative uh, nature with them and then when it when I did ayahuasca, I like it made me just really just like okay like get rid of your fucking ego, put that shit to the side. Like this is what really matters. And it was it was honestly really impactful. So as soon as I did it, I like text both of them and I sent them like a bunch of love. And I realized that I was the one that went and did drugs, and, <laughs> and I had this crazy revelation. And they still fucking hate me. <laughs> so it was horrible. I was just like I was like oh man like this so much love and all this shit. My brother's like, fuck off. <laughs> He's like, leave me alone. Why do they hate you? Um, I just think, well, they don't, I don't think there's a hate. Like me and my brother just have a very like, he's my big brother. And um, maybe there's, there's an element of, you know, I, I don't know, maybe I owe him like helping him along his career or maybe I. So, so is, are they upset that you've made it and haven't, uh, um, given back to them or no the thing is like I've given back to like the people that have, have always been there to me so like I've taken care of my mom um, in a bunch of ways and then saved my sisters yeah um, but I think with my brother it's just been more of a sense that like we never really could figure out how to like each other like uh -huh. when we were kids we were cool but as we went through puberty and shit like we would have some like really big fights where the police would be cold and shit like that uh -huh. um, and it wouldn't wouldn't be really good but I just think that yeah as as we grew up like we're just two very very different people and he doesn't really understand where I come from like come in with a lot of my opinions and I don't really understand where he comes and I think that it always causes like a miscommunication like recently we um it was a couple of months ago uh I, I messaged him because I was like hey just checking in and make sure everything's all good and I was at this uh clinic you know muscle labs yeah yeah so I was in there like getting stretched out so I didn't have my phone and he replied within 10 minutes and I took like an hour and a half to reply because I was getting stretched out I didn't have my phone. And he's like, yeah, f like, fuck you, you dickhead. <laughs> like, of course, like, you just, you want to text me because you want to get something out of me. I was like, bro, I'm just, I was like, I said, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm at Muscle Labs. Like, I'm, I'm getting stretched. He's like, he's like, I don't give a fuck what you're at. Like, he's like, you're a cut. And then he's like trying to like shit on me and attack Never me. tell anybody you're at Muscle Labs. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Yeah, he's like, what the fuck are you doing that? Anyway, but it's just a very like hot and cold relationship. So it's, it's one of those things that's probably going to take a little bit of work. Does he have a significant other in his life? Um, Does he have a job? Does he have? Is he, <laughs> right. is he set up with what he's doing? Because I, I've had relationships like that mm. with people, um, you know. And if they're not in a good place, yeah, it, it, it's hard. It's I, I do try to put myself in other in their shoes, you know. Yeah. If they're not in a good place, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be hard for them to have a relationship with you. Today's podcast is brought to you by Blue Chew. Yes, Blue Chew. Thank you for coming on board here. Uh, at the All Good Things podcast. Guys, you know I'm on the older side and one of the worst things is when you're in the bedroom and you know you can't perform. It happens to everybody. 
Even me! Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra or Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Now they also have Vardenafil mint flavored chewables that has the same active ingredient as Levitra and Staxin so you can stay hard and fresh. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve stronger, harder erections to help all forms of ED. Blue Chew is an online prescription service so no more going to the doctor's office, no more awkward conversations, no more waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Just go to bluechew.com and consult with one of their licensed medical providers. Once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part, it is all done online. Blue Chew's medical providers are going to work with you to find the right prescription. What's that? You don't like swallowing pills? Well, you don't have to. Blue Chew's tablets are totally chewable and go down easy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepare and ship direct, so it's a heck of a lot cheaper than a pharmacy. And right now, a special deal for our listeners. You can try Blue Chew for free. Just go to bluechew.com and enter my promo code Good things. That's one word. Good things. Enter that promo code and get your first month free. And pay just five dollars in shipping, guys. This is an amazing opportunity to, you know, rock someone's world in the bedroom. I say, why not? Why don't you try it out? Go to bluechew.com. Check it out today, guys. Thank you so much to them for sponsoring us. It means the world to me. Please support them and please go try Blue Chew. Okay, so <laughs> this is Jess's idea, which is a pretty good idea. Uh, okay, so you guys know Smash or Pass, right? Mm. You know Smash or Pass. Yeah. You look at a photo. You, you smash. can say you want to smash or you want to pass. Okay. We've got some girls here, and uh, just take a look uh. and just see if you'd smash or pass. Okay, yeah. Let me, uh. let me hold it. Who is that? Looks like my best friend's sister. Oh, <laughs> smash! <laughs> Great skin. <laughs> you would smash Davina? Yeah. Oops. Oh, smash or pass? Wow, I don't know who that is. Wow, smash! Oh, really? <laughs> wow, Ilya's lucky he's not a girl. He would get his cheeks clapped. He would get his cheeks hey, clapped. Harry, Harry, I heard what you said about me on the podcast. Uh, <laughs> really appreciate it. Wow, <laughs> that of course is Todd as a girl. Yeah, I'd probably pass on that. Probably it looks like like a <laughs> big Todd? bush. Oh, that's fun. Who's Smash. That? Oh, really? This is Scott? Wow. Hold on a second. Would you? That is not Scott. Really? You, you'd smash? Yeah, he's really cute. Yeah, I would fucking Jeez, really cute. face fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> looks like Jack. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like his girlfriend, Jack. It does. Scott, yeah. you narcissistic fuck. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> not blaming Scott for this. <laughs> There was a plot. You, it was a plot in Rick and Morty the other night where the person falls in love with themselves. Uh, and there's like two of them. So that's Scott. He's, he loves himself. Who the fuck is Who that? Who is that? That's Zane. Wow. Pass. Pass? <laughs> Just because of Zane? It's up to you. Uh, I'm I'm pretty much smashing every single person right now. Okay, Harry. There's not a lot I would say no to. Uh, pass for sure. <laughs> is that Jay Boys? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at the arms. I couldn't I couldn't get past that. Take take the arms out of it. <laughs> nah, it's not my not my flavor of fruit. Heath, you look great, but better yeah. as a guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jonah? Is that Jonah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now remember, he's she's really funny. She's got a great sense of humor. So you have to factor that in. Yeah, it's not just... Yeah, actually, you know, with that in mind, I'd still pass for sure. <laughs> yeah. You could, could make enough jokes to make me come. <laughs> Matt King? Wow. No way. Wow. <laughs> it looks wholesome, but pass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You still have the same personality, so... Yeah. <laughs> Who's that? That's Joe. Smash. <laughs> We'd have great kids. <laughs> Joe's not bad. Yeah, it's a good looking girl. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> I can't. First of all, Harry doesn't know Mike. Do I? But, but maybe you do. Is he always at the house? He's our um, my rabbi friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Is that Man and Matthews? Who's that? It's me. I look good. Uh, <laughs> I would fuck the shit out of myself. Harry, you look good. I would literally fuck myself. Smoldering. So hard. Yeah. Well, there you go. Wow, that's that's uh, awesome. Smash your pass. All yeah. right. Oh, here, quick rapid fire. Kangaroos, friendly or dirty bastards? Dirty bastards. Ever jack off your pet bull, Nigel? Uh, no. <laughs> like, no, I didn't, but, like, we made it, yeah, I'll stop <laughs> We made it fuck the cows. And I'd feed him mangoes while he did it. You feed, did, did, did the bull like mangoes? Yeah, he would just, like, come and lay in the paddock, and I'd just come with, like, a bunch of mangoes, because we had a mango farm, and I'd lay down and, That's like, so feed cool. him mangoes, and he would just, and he'd hate everyone but me. Really? Yeah. Do you miss wildlife? I mean, do you miss having uh, livestock? So much. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. Especially when they, like, get to know you. Yeah, I miss, I miss uh, it a lot. Finger in the ass. No thanks, or I'll give it a whirl. I'll give it a whirl. <laughs> <laughs> Hottest Australian, Margot Robbie or Miranda Kerr? Oh, uh, Margot Robbie. Yeah. Yeah. Would you ever go on Love Island? Yep. Would you ever go on The Bachelor? Yep. Go-to pickup line? I can't say that. That's racist. Um, <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. <laughs> uh, Ideal okay. first date? Um, in my bed. Why does Haley Steinfeld hate you? Because <laughs> um, I'm annoying to her. <laughs> what, what is the story? Oh, you DM'd her, right? Yeah, I DM'd her, and then like right away, within within seconds, she just said no. <laughs> and and then I was like, gotta respect it. I was like, wait. The, it, and, and this is also when the show was like right like peaking so i'm like my ego is huge like what yeah. the fuck she's she's like um i was like oh why do you hate me and she's like i don't hate you yeah and then i sent her a voice out of me laughing and i was like yo like what the fuck did i do and it was literally nothing but then I, I i sent her photos of my dog and i was like what about bruce he deserves a reply and she's like sure <laughs> it, it was it was so cold but then i messaged her recently i was like hey can i like post these screenshots on my tiktok for a funny joke yeah to promote your song She's like, yeah, of course. She thought it was hilarious. That was nice. But then her whole audience, like, I, mean, I was getting tagged in, like, Twitter and shit. And like, people were so angry. Like, Harry Jazz is so creepy. I was like, oh, no, she, she said it was okay. But I deleted it because I was like, yeah, I right. actually look stupid. <laughs> Story. Uh, last person you texted? Um, Georgia. Um, ever had a three-way? Yeah, like nine times. <laughs> One time with, with two girls. <laughs> The rest of it was just me and my best friend, just like a, a pack of fucking wolves. How do you have sex with another guy in the room? Strong eye contact with him. <laughs> Lots of high fives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's a lot of fun. It's just like you and your boy, like, I don't know, playing fucking beer pong. You know, it's kind of like that type of vibe. <laughs> uh, most famous person's DMs you slid in? Probably Haley Steinfeld, right? Chloe. Oh, Chloe. Chloe right. Kim. More famous, yeah. The whole family. Uh, Australia or New Zealand? Australia. Australia or the US? Australia. Good. Marmite or Vegemite? Vegemite. If you had to be stranded on an island with another cast member from Too Hot to Handle, who would, you, who would it be and why? <sighs> None of them. They're fucking pet. Oh, actually, no. Probably Corey, just because he's, like, very fit, and I feel like if we needed to survive, okay. he could, like, run and take down a dolphin. <laughs> yeah. You ever eat dolphin? No, my dad ate turtle. He said it was very interesting. Really? Yeah. All right. Uh, well, meat pie or sausage roll? Meat pie. Okay. All right, here. So do we got to stop? Four more minutes. Yeah. Might as well. Okay. Wow. All right. One more. This will be for TikTok, maybe. Awesome. Okay. This is Never Have I Ever with Harry Jowsey. Okay. Never have I ever cheated on someone. <laughs> okay, let's pull by that one. Never have I ever sent a sex to the wrong number. <laughs> My mom's best friend. Maybe it was the right number. I don't know. I was in high school. <laughs> Your mom's best friend? Yeah, I was in high school. And where I lived, we didn't have, like, much cell phone reception. So you'd have to, like, go to a corner of the house to, like, send it. And it was, like, late at night. And me and this girl were, like, texting like crazy. And then um, I sent a bunch of, like, very risky, like, naughty texts and then some photos. And the next day, my mom's best friend was, like, taking us to school. And we, all of our phones got cell phone reception at the same time. And she's, like... Hey, why did you send me this? And I was driving, and I was like, yo, fucking, I was like, don't look at that. You're crazy. And I, like, deleted off her phone. She's like, yeah, because at that time, when I was in high school, one of my friends was like, you should never save anyone's numbers. So if you're, like, with your girl, she, like, it's just, it's not a name. It's just a yeah, random number. Yeah, yeah, and I was like, good call. So I had, like, fucking 20 people that I didn't have their numbers saved. Right. So I was just sending cockpicks and hoping it was the right person. So, yeah, there we go. 
Was she sexy? No. No. <laughs> you should write a book. Have you written a book yet? Bro, I can't. I can barely fucking read a menu, <laughs> let alone write a book. But I would no, love to. you should write a book. Yeah. I'm telling you, this, all this shit is really good. Uh, never have ever joined the Mile High Club. Uh, I have never. Okay. I've jerked off on a plane. Though. It was really awkward. I guess you could call that the Mile High Club in some ways. It's yeah, it was weird in an economy as well. <laughs> People like, there's this guy moaning into his fucking movie. But I had face, the exit roll. I had my face on the fucking like, screen. Like, <laughs> trying to lean over and hide it. Oh, you didn't even go to the bathroom. No, no, no. No, no I see. Right I had, in the seat. I had a blanket. Got it. And a moisturizer. Uh, guys, the pressure's on. The jackhammering's going to start again. <laughs> there it is. We're going to have to call the podcast soon. Okay. Never have I ever had a threesome. We did that. Have. Never have I ever been kicked out of a club. I mean, I have. You have. Never have I ever knowingly spread a rumor. Yeah, about myself. <laughs> about yourself? Of course. What was it? Uh, when, it when that Dumois stuff come out, I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try and sp spread more. So I put in like a bunch <laughs> of things. Hopefully that, like, that would work. Three yeah. minutes. Never have I ever been arrested. For what? Uh, willful damage. Willful damage? <laughs> yeah. What's that? I got charged for it. Um, I decided to just start breaking shit one day. <laughs> I was really fucked up. You were? I was 16, and then we started smashing letterboxes and stole a bunch of gnomes, uh -huh. and then broke into a place and stole their wine. Okay. Yeah. Well, you've, you've, you've grown. That yeah, was when I'll never do that again. What? Was, I'll never do it again. It was crazy. Yeah. Never have ever walked in on someone having sex. Yeah, that's yeah. on too hot to handle, maybe. No, just, in, yeah, all the time. Just all the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. People are just horny when I'm around. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Never have ever stood up a date. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Never have ever broke up with someone over text. Plenty of times. Like, almost every time. <laughs> what do you say? Um, this sucks. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but, like, I've got a lot of growing to do, and, and it's irresponsible <laughs> for me to put it on you when I need to take a moment and, like, look after myself. So I think it's best if we just call things off now so in six months' time you don't get hurt. And we can keep things like in a super good area. Oh, yeah. that's really good. Except, yeah. and, you know, probably would have been better face to face, but yeah, but it's easier on text, you know. Yeah, it is. And and do people get mad when you send a breakup text? Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're pissed yeah. off. But, yeah, and, and sh do you think you should have done it over the phone at least? Can yeah, I yeah. I, I I've grown now. So You've I grown. Now. Okay, good, good. Okay, last one. Never have I ever hooked up with a celebrity. Hell yeah, uh, Harry. Woo. We don't need to know who it is. Unless you want to tell us. It will get me in a lot of trouble. Okay, then don't this say it. This is very big. Guys, Harry Jowsey, go check him out. Go check out his podcast, Tap In. Go check him out on OnlyFans. Go <laughs> check him out on TikTok. Watch all the episodes of Too Hot to Handle. Follow me on Instagram, please. I'm losing followers. Follow him on Instagram. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. This has been the All Good Things Podcast. Thank you so much. Uh, and we will see you next time. My thanks to Happy Face Studios for having us. Okay, bye-bye.